Africa, a vast continent with rich biodiversity, is the only place where the earliest hominin fossils have been found. While fossils from the Homo genus have been discovered in different parts of the world, the earliest hominins, like Australopithecus, are exclusive to Africa. During a period of two to three million years ago, one member of these early hominins gave rise to the Homo genus. However, the fossil record from this important time period, which connects Australopithecus to early Homo, is fragmented, making it challenging to identify the crucial, missing link. New fossil discoveries and scientific analyses are blurring the lines between Australopithecus and Homo, challenging our understanding of the transition between these two genera. Based on the latest findings, it remains uncertain how old the Homo genus is. There are several Australopith species that could potentially be ancestors of Homo, but there is little agreement on which, if any, is the actual ancestor. The presence of similar features in late Australopiths and early Homo, along with possible interbreeding between species, makes it currently impossible to identify the direct ancestor of Homo erectus. Recent discoveries have challenged previous assumptions about Homo habilis and Homo erectus, suggesting a greater diversity within these early human species. Previously it was thought that Homo erectus was the earliest stone tool maker and out of Africa migrant, however, the finding of ancient stone tools in Kenya and China questions the exclusivity of Homo in tool production and raises the possibility of earlier migrations by species like Homo habilis or even Australopithecus. These discoveries call for a more nuanced understanding of human evolution during this period. Rather than clear-cut distinctions between species and their associated behaviors, it seems that many behaviors were shared among different species. Some species we considered less advanced may have engaged in activities previously attributed only to Homo, while some species we deemed more advanced may have lacked certain human characteristics. Certain trends have been identified in the early Homo period. These include brain expansion, reduced facial features, smaller jaws and teeth, larger body size, and evidence of full terrestrial bipedalism. These traits are linked to a significant behavioral shift, emphasizing culture as a flexible strategy for adapting to the environment. This includes the use of stone tools, meat processing, fire utilization, prolonged childhood, cooperative child rearing, and skilled foraging techniques. Cultural innovations and biological changes mutually influenced each other, shaping human evolution. There are several Australopith species that are considered potential ancestors of the Homo genus. However, paleoanthropologists use the term, ancestor, in different ways, leading to different interpretations. In the past, it was believed that there were only a few hominin species at any given time, with earlier species directly leading to later ones without coexistence or extinction. But now we understand that the fossil record is more complex. The main question is whether any of the Australpath species represent the morphological pattern of the Homo ancestor. Australopithecus africanus, the first Australopath discovered, was initially considered the most likely ancestor of Homo. However, the variability in the Australopithecus africanus fossils and their similarity to both Paranthropus and Homo raised the possibility of multiple species within Australopithecus africanus. Recent phylogenetic analyses position Australopithecus africanus as basal to a clade that includes Homo and robust Australopiths or Paranthropus. The discovery of older hominin fossils at latterly and Hadar led to a reconsideration of hominin phylogeny. Australopithecus afarensis, 
a species that was suggested to be the direct ancestor of Homo, was proposed to belong to a different group than Australopithecus africanus. Australopithecus afarensis exhibits a generalized form that could be ancestral to all later harmonins, including both Homo and later Australopiths. It is considered more primitive in appearance than Australopithecus africanus. Australopithecus gari is represented by a single partial cranium and is considered a potential ancestor of early Homo due to its location and time period. Complicating matters, the proposal of the genus Kenyanthropus for a deformed skull found in Kenya, known as Kenyanthropus platyops, raised questions about the relationship between Homo rudolfensis and Kenyanthropus. However, this proposition did not gain widespread acceptance. The Australopithecine candidates in East Africa, such as Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus gari, exhibited a trend of large molars seen in the Paranthropus genus. The idea that the Homo genus originated in South Africa gained attention with the discovery of Australopithecus sediba. Sediba had some skull characteristics similar to early Homo species, suggesting it could be a link between Australopithecus and early Homo. It had a mix of primitive and advanced traits, distinguishing it from other species. In terms of body size and limbs, Sediba resembled other Australopiths but had some features similar to Homo, potentially making walking and running more efficient. Sediba had a small cranial capacity and specific skull features, suggesting it descended from Australopithecus africanus and had more similarities to Homo than other Australopiths. The exact position of Sediba in relation to early Homo species is uncertain. It could be a possible ancestor of Homo or a close relative that lived alongside early Homo. The discovery of Sediba does not contradict the existence of older Homo fossils, as the Sediba site may not represent the earliest or latest appearance of the species. Sediba likely evolved from Australopithecus africanus, and the possibility of divergence before the appearance of Homo cannot be excluded. It exhibited a unique combination of primitive and advanced traits in its skull and skeleton. The fossils of Sediba, particularly MH1 and MH2, differed in age, sex, and body size. MH1 was a young male with larger molars than MH2, a fully grown female who was smaller overall. The level of size difference was slight, similar to modern humans. The skeleton of MH2 suggests that Sediba may have had a unique way of walking called hyperpronation, suitable for both land and trees. The internal bone structure of Sediba's hand indicates it was adapted for both walking and precise manipulation, distinguishing it from other fossil harmonins. Sediba exhibited features suggesting it was evolving toward the Homo grade, including increased brain size, reduced facial and dental features, enhanced bipedal characteristics, and potential tool use. However, no species show a complete set of these features, indicating an adaptive mix. Determining the precise ancestor of Homo erectus is challenging due to fragmentary fossil remains. The main issue with considering Sediba as an ancestor of the Homo genus is the difference in time periods. The earliest Homo fossils are much older than the Sediba fossils. However, the age of fossils doesn't always indicate the order of species. If an ancestor and its descendant lived together, the ancestor's fossil could be younger than the descendant's fossil. Analyzing species relationships doesn't provide a direct answer about one species descending from another. For Sediba to be a possible ancestor of Homo, there would need to be a significant overlap in time between the youngest Sediba and the earliest Homo fossil. Some experts consider this scenario unlikely, 
as said above fossils are 1.977 million years old, while the earliest Homo specimen is 2.8 to 2.75 million years old. The debate about early Homo species, like Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis, is ongoing. Fossils of these species are around 2.1 million years old, but there are older fossil remains that are controversially classified as Homo. Fossil findings from South Africa and isolated teeth have been tentatively assigned to Homo but face challenges in classification. For fossils younger than 2.1 million years ago, there is more agreement, but debates continue about their variability and classification. Recent discoveries have challenged our previous understanding of the transition from Australopiths to the Homo genus. It was believed that early Homo, represented by Homo erectus, had larger brains and bodies, reduced sexual dimorphism, and changes in behavior like stone tool use and social cooperation. However, New findings show that there are small-brained and small-bodied Homo erectus specimens and large-bodied Australopiths, questioning these assumptions. Climate variability, adaptation to different regions, and developmental flexibility may have played significant roles in body size differences. There were Australopiths with small jaws and teeth that overlapped in size with early Homo, and early Homo may have matured more rapidly than modern humans. The use of stone tools and possibly even meat-eating predates the earliest appearance of Homo. The concept of species integrity and potential genetic interchange between different hominin groups further complicates our understanding. Interbreeding among these groups may make it challenging to determine the ancestry of Homo erectus definitively. We must also consider the role of random drift and non-directed evolutionary processes in shaping variability among these species. If these factors are significant, it becomes even more challenging to unravel the emergence of our own genus. Australopithecus and Homo represent points in a gradual transition, and the transformation from Australopiths to Homo occurred over many generations, making it hard to pinpoint specific evolutionary changes. However, based on available evidence and new analytical methods, Australopithecus sediba is currently considered the most likely candidate ancestor of the Homo genus. The African fossil record of Homo shows diversity between 2.0 and 1.7 million years ago, and there are even hints of diversity dating back to 2.4 million years ago. This challenges the idea that Homo needs to have adaptive unity for classification. Recent evidence of tool use before the earliest known Homo fossils suggests a bridge between Homo and Australopithecus in terms of their abilities. In recent years, Discoveries in labs and in the field have challenged our understanding of Homo's origins in almost every aspect. We look forward to more discoveries and insights in the coming years.